I expect the uh, Blue Ribbon Committee to have a report available by the end of uh, this fiscal year, which is June 30th. We'll begin that work, and uh, that report will form the basis of whatever we give to a transition advisory board in hopes that we will be at a point where the council functions as the legislative body, the mayor functions as the executive body, and the administration supports the mayor and the council in doing the work of the city of Flint. That's the goal as I see it going forward in 2014. Uh, again, that challenge has been made a little bit more difficult by the ruling, uh, but we're, we're concerned about making sure that it, those things that we can control are under our control, and that would be good management, that would be pursuing the, uh, the, 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 the learning experiences, particularly for the new members of council, and also working together uh, to get us to that point where I can make that recommendation. And that basically, uh, Mr. Chairman, other than the request for the uh, appointment of the committees, concludes my update. Thank you, Mr. Early, and I'm um, planning on making those appointments at the end of the, um, after all the uh, speakers have the opportunity to speak this evening. Okay, that's fine. I did neglect one thing. I didn't neglect it, but <coughs> as I was talking, I asked the mayor to take just a couple moments because he's a part of that. I'm representing the administration, uh, and, and you all are the legislators, and I, I wanted him to make a, a couple comments in that regard in support of moving forward in the direction that I've laid out. Mr. President, may I ask Mr. Early something before he sit down? Not right now. Mr. Mayor, you can uh, the address the city council. All right. well, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you for a few minutes tonight uh, to our council members, uh, council leadership and president, as well as our, our concerned citizens who are taking time to be here tonight. Uh, we may differ on a few of the details, but I believe we all agree on the goals of a safe and sustainable, as well as a democratic city, and we want to take steps in that regard. So uh, having had an opportunity to also review the audit, uh, listen to the previous presentation, I have a few observations of my own that I'd like to share with you. The first is that uh, we need to continue to each do all that we can as elected leaders uh, to encourage the trend of fiscal responsibility. Uh, we all know that over the years the City of Flint's faced a variety of different financial challenges, uh, some extremely severe. Uh, we're hearing about another one of those in some detail tonight. Uh, but we all need to do uh, what we can in terms of our own ideas and proposals to continue that uh, fiscal responsibility. Uh, another thing is that the, the focus on new development and implementing the master plan I think is critical. Uh, you heard from the auditors that under state law, uh, Proposal A limits the increase in existing uh, property values in terms of their taxable value to rise at inflation or 5%. Uh, one of the ways that then you add to your taxable value is to have new development come into the city because that new development is then uh, fully assessed at, at half of its uh, market value at the time that it's built. So. Uh, whether it's General Motors making new building uh, investments or American Pipe, uh, that adds to the tax base that we can have and depend on going forward. Uh, I also see a need to continue to look for long-term savings. Uh, we need to find things that don't just save us money uh, for one budget year. We need to find things that are going to save us money uh, long-term. And you saw that in the long-term 20-year uh, revenue and expenditure chart uh, we need things that are going to save us money uh, over time, not just uh, one, one at a time. The, the grants are also critical. Uh, I know that over time council members will get more involved in that work. You saw how important those revenues are in terms of our overall ability to provide services. They may be restricted uh, to demolition or to blight, but those are the services that our community is asking us for. Uh, so having those resources I think is critical. The, the other item is I'd also encourage you to consider, as we work with the Michigan Municipal League, getting involved in the state policy reform work and asking for a positive partnership uh, from our state, whether that's with revenue sharing, uh, other changes with transportation dollars or housing funds. Uh, we're going to have to uh, see some changes at the state level. Uh, the status quo is not going to help us achieve the stability uh, that we know that we want. I had an opportunity earlier today to meet with Mayor Lansing, uh, uh, Mayor Bernero in Lansing, uh, Mayor Hopewell in Kalamazoo, 
and some others. You, from a distance, those cities may uh, look more healthy in terms of their budgets, but they're very concerned about the long-term uh, viability of their governmental structures uh, given what's happening with the state policy and how property values are interacting with state law. So uh, I'd encourage you to be a part of those discussions. Uh, it's going to take some serious courage and some serious creativity for us to deal with this challenge. I think that's what we can all continue to work on over the next few months, and I look forward to the opportunity to work with you through the new committees that will be established, uh, hear from the public comments tonight, and, and see how quickly we can get to that uh, democratic city that's one of our goals. So thank you for the time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything else, Mr. Early? Okay, thank you. Are there any uh, petitions or unofficial communications, Madam Clerk? No, Mr. President. Are there any communications from other city officials, Madam Clerk? Not at this time. Okay, that brings us to the public speaking portion of our meeting. Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. Mays. Yeah, Mr. President, we started this meeting. We've heard Mr. Early, thank you for giving me the floor. We heard Mr. Early talk about meaningful dialogue or orderly approach, working as a team, and then we heard the mayor say democratic. I know what all of those things mean, but it's been demonstrated here thus far that we're not having meaningful dialogue it's not an orderly approach as it relates to Robert's Rules of Order, and we ain't working as a team because I've been separated for some reason, and that's not democratic. So what I'm trying to say to you is this. When I asked to speak to Mr. Early, I asked Mr. Brown this under oath, and I want to hear what Mr. Early say, whether he's under oath or not under oath, because this is the real city council. We can ask Ms. Brown to put people under oath, because in Detroit, when Kwame Kilpatrick committed perjury under oath, it came back to haunt him. And so believe me, under the charter that I know, which is an orderly fashion, Robert's Rules, which is orderly fashion, I'm taking his words, and working as a team. I had a simple question, and I thought you should have respected me, and I wanted to ask him, is the charter in effect? Is council rules in effect? Because if I can't communicate under Robert's rules in an orderly fashion, as a team player, meaningful dialogue, in a democratic way, then guess what? What have we got? So believe me, sir, you gave me the floor. I appreciate it. I'm a well-educated college graduate of Michigan State University who don't like being made a fool of in front of the public. And I'm here to ask the question, are we operating under the charter of any sort? Are we operating under Robert's rules? And if so, then I want to continue to know that I'm taking an orderly approach, working as a team, meaningful dialogue in a democratic society. And so that's the question I want to ask him when you didn't allow me, because maybe you think I don't know how to take an orderly approach Work as a team, meaningful dialogue in a democratic society. Thank you. Are we working under the charter in Robert's Roof? Yes, no. We are operating under Public, Public Act 436, which supersedes the charter. Since we are a political subdivision of the state of Michigan, that statute empowers the emergency manager to delegate specific responsibilities to the city council, which he has done. Yes, he did. And he did that under emergency manager order number two. Emergency manager order number two was enacted by and signed by Mr. Kurtz. And then when Mr. Early came on under emergency manager order number two, he reaffirmed it. And when he reaffirmed it, he had all of us sign. I signed on November 22nd. So I know what Public Act 436 say, um, Mr. Peter Bay, and I'm here to tell you under emergency manager order number two, it says that we meet once a month, and the purpose that we meet is to hear public comment. And then it says also that if he puts something else on the agenda, he can do that. But it does not say that we're not working 
under the charter and under Robert's rules. And it does not suspend our council rules. So you can keep saying Public Act 436. Public Act 436 worked like Public Act 4. It operates under executive orders. He issues executive orders. And this executive order, emergency manager number two. So if you quit sidestepping the question, we all know what Public Act 436 say. The Court of Appeals just told y'all in what you've been talking about, that Public Act 436 didn't give y'all the power what it did, you thought it did for them retirees. And I'm telling you, it might be overturned. So, okay, I concede. We're under Public Act 436, and we operate under emergency manager order number two. Through you, Mr. President, to the city attorney, the question is, are we also working under Robert's rules and or the um, rules of the city council and part of the charter? Well, you sort of pick and choose the orders you subscribe to because after the first meeting, after two repeated interruptions, after a totally inefficient council meeting that kept the public here for hours unnecessarily, the emergency manager issued an order specifically directed to you, empowering the, the president of city council to control these meetings so that folks that spend their time to come down here and attend these meetings aren't put through endless speech. Point of order, Mr. President. That ain't even the answer to the question. He's answering your question. So, oh, okay. so you sort of pick and choose the, yes, yes. You pick and choose the, the, the orders that you want to follow. And, and yes, during a meeting, Robert's Rules applies under, under the provisions of Public Act 436 and to the extent to the extent that the emergency manager assigns matters to council. Uh, so yes, the Robert's Rules does apply in a meeting, as do the orders issued by the emergency manager. Uh, one of those orders that was specifically directed at you was intended to control these meetings and to ensure folks aren't sitting here for hours and hours while you make a speech after every single person